In this video, we'll be talking about the floating point notation, which is designed to address the problem that we talked about in one of the previous videos, where we noted that the radix point was jumping around, and I mentioned that it can cause a bit of a confusion for the computer. Throughout this video, I will be talking about the 8-bit floating point notation, which you will find out very soon. It's a really small system, so it doesn't allow you to work with huge numbers. However, it's convenient enough to understand and work with on a paper, and you can just extend the general rules to any systems. So, let's see what is this floating point notation looks like. Well, the floating point notation, these eight bits, are broken up into three parts. The first part is just one single digit telling you what is the sign of your number. The next three digits we call the exponent, which will tell the computer where to move the decimal point from here. And the last four digits called the mantissa. Now the mantissa is the normalized version of your binary number into the 0.122 format. We're going to go through it in, in details. Now the exponent bit in this format is just 3 bits, so you can only move your decimal point to 3 into the right or to the left, which straight away tells you that you can't really cover great ranges, but it's good enough and the exponent is expressed as a 3 bits to complement notation. So, the sign bit. If we have a positive number, we're going to use 0. If we have a negative number, we're going to use a 1. As I said, the exponent is 3 bits to complement. And the mantissa, which is always four bits in this particular number, we're going to have it normalized. So, when you have got a negative number, something like minus three and a half, how are you going to convert this into an 8 bits floating point notation? Well, step one will be identify the sign bit. Now this is going to be the easiest. 1 for negative number, 0 for positive number. Step 2 will be is convert into binary and normalize to get to the mantissa. Step 3 is find the exponent, which will be something to do with the mantissa, how you normalize your number, and express it as a 3 bits twos complement notation. And the last step is just to pull everything together and put it into the format of the sign, followed by three of the exponent digits and followed by four of the mantissa. Okay, it sounds quite a long and probably a little bit alien in uh, theory, but I think what will going to help us if we go through a couple of simple examples. So let's look at minus one and a quarter. Okay, sign bit going to be 1, because this is a negative number. Now we're going to find the mantissa. For that, first, what we need to do, we need to convert 1 and a quarter into binary. So, let's again bring in the place values. Now, this is the radix point. Here is 1, 2, 4, and the rest of them the whole numbers. And after comes a half, a quarter, an eighth, etc, etc. Now I've chosen a, I've deliberately chosen a simple example. So to write 1 and a quarter in binary, all we need to do is 1, radix point followed with 0, 1. 
So this is our binary number, but we need to normalize it into the mantissa. So the normalized, the normalized mantissa then will be 0 0.101. And remember that our mantissa needs to be 4 bits, so I need to put an extra 0 into here. Now, what happens in this case? Now, I found my mantissa. I found my mantissa now, but I still need my exponent. The exponent, the easier way to think about it is to try to think about the exponent from the computer's point of view. Because once the computer read the sign bit and the exponent bit, then the computer will know where to start from and how many places to move the radix point. Now from this radix point here, in the, from the mantissa, to get back to the original number, which remember was minus one and a quarter, to get back to the original number, the computer will need to move one places into this direction. And this is the positive direction. So I'm moving one place to the right. That's a positive. It's like multiplying by 10 in, in, normal, uh, numbers, uh, in normal circumstances. So I'm moving the decimal point by one places into the positive direction. So my exponent will be positive 1. But what does positive 1 look like in 3 bits 2's complement? So remember I've only got 3 bits. It's a positive number, so the first digit will be 0. And it's just positive 1, so it's 0, 0, 1. So pulling all these things together and putting it into the sign exponent exponent mantissa format, the sign negative number will be 1. The exponent is positive 1, so it will be 0, 0, 1. And the mantissa, now because the computer knows that the mantissa is designed to be 0 point something something, so that 0 point we can always forget, and I can just write down the following four digits. 1, 0, 1, 0. So this is equivalent to minus 1 and a quarter. So this is the 8 bits floating point notation for minus 1 and a quarter. Now you might spot here what happens if I had to put, let's say after normalization, I end up with 5, 6 or 7 digits. Well, with this 8 bits floating point, we would have to cut off at the first 4 bits. So we would have trunking error. Obviously, the computer works with bigger lengths of digits. Therefore, the trunking error doesn't come up as much. So in practical situation when you have to carry out the calculations, trunking errors do occur. In real situations when the computer does it, it's very very minimized. Let's look at another example. Minus 2 and 2 eighths. Now when I look at this number, what I can see here straight away that I can cancel this one down and this is actually minus two and a quarter. Okay, so step one, sign. And in this case, the sign will be equal to one because I'm talking about a negative number. Step two, convert. And find the mantissa. So, two and a quarter, let's convert that into binary. Bring in the place values again. This is your radix point. One, two, four, a half, a quarter, and an eight. So, for two, to build up the whole part, we need one, zero, and the radix point for a quarter, we don't need any half, and we use one quarter. So, this is our ordinary binary which is equal to two and a quarter. But remember now we need to normalize it. And the normalization process goes as bring it into the 0 0.1 and the rest of the digit would follow. So if I normalize it, what would mean I would need to move this decimal point into the front in here. So I would have the point moved into here and then what would follow now is 0 0.1001. Okay? 
and remember that this part will be our montessa, the one that follows after the point. Then step three is we need to identify or express the exponent. Now remember, the easiest way to think about the exponent is how many places you would need to move the decimal point if you were the computer. So you were reading this number and the original number was 10.01. So you need to tell the computer via the exponent that he needs to get to this number, from this number. So what would you need to do in here? You would need to move the decimal point two places into this direction. And this is the positive direction. So the exponent would have to be positive 2. And the positive 2 in 3 bits 2's complement, remember positive number is 0 and 2 is 1, 0. So this is our exponent now. And lastly, pull all these bits together. The sign bit was 1. The 3 bits of the exponent is 0, 1, 0. And the 4 bits of the mantissa is 1, 0, 0, 1, which is this bit here. So this is equal to minus 2 and 2 eighths. Now look at the last example. And the last, last example will be minus 1 16th. Sign bit, which is our first step, is again 1 because it's a negative number. Step 2, now I need to convert and find the mantissa. So place values. I don't have any whole numbers, so all I'm going to do, I'm going to express the fractional place values. A half, a quarter, an eighth, and a sixteen. And again, because of the way I've chosen this number, this will be 0 0.0001. Okay? Now, remember that your mantissa has to be 0 0.1 something. So how can I get from this number into this format? Now the only way I can get to here is by moving the decimal point one, two, three places. So the exponent, which is our step three, I moved my decimal point three places but have I moved it into positive or negative direction? Let's look at that again. So I normalized it, but remember that Montessa needs to be four bits long, so I need to put three more zeros in here. And now the computer comes in, and you're telling the computer that from this number, you want to go back to the original number. Okay, so from here, to get back to the original number of 0 0.30 is followed by the 1. You have to tell the computer to move the radix point into the opposite direction than before. So this exponent will be negative 3. Now let's see if we can express negative 3 in 3 bits 2 complements. Remember how we did the 2's complement if it comes to negative numbers. Just express 3 as a 3 bits binary number, positive 3, and positive 3 again using the place values is 1, 2, 4. Remember, we don't have anything else in here, so it's 0, 1, 1. And to make it into negative 3, you need to copy the digits until you copy the 1, which is in our case is the very first step and then invert everything else. Swap ones for zeros and zeros for ones for zero, one. So this is your negative three in here. So your exponent is one, zero, one. Pull the whole thing together. Sign bit was one. 
the exponent is 101 and the mantissa is 1 followed by three zeros. So this is the equivalent of minus 1 over 16. Now just to recap what the computer would actually do in here, the computer would come and start to read the digits. Okay? With this digit here, you're telling the computer that he needs to think about a negative number. With this digit, you're telling the computer how many places, in what direction, he needs to move the radix point that starts from here. And then that way, it will be able to renormalize the mantissa, find out what number hides behind this binary code. I hope you now have a clear idea of how to convert numbers into 8 bits floating point notation. On the following pages, you will have some practice questions and then you will find the answers to these. So these are the practice questions. And here are the answers.